As a revolutionary, I know there's positive in everything. And I look at the positive attributes of my people, not the negative attributes of my people. By doing this, I'm hoping to transform the atmosphere in my community. Hmm. I mean, how anyone with a straight face can think that obsessing about your floors and dust is any kind of adequate challenge to the intelligence and creativity of a human being is beyond me. There's a great deal in common between undertakers and famous writers, you know. Um, both of them offer their customers, or imply that their customers will get immortality, and then they overcharge for it and don't come through. What I'm searching for is some one-word title that connotes people moving history. Like, if a guy hadn't snatched it already, I would love to use the word odyssey. In fact, over very large distances, there are only three signs of intelligent life on Earth or any other kind of life on Earth. One is domestic television transmission, you know, the housewives' daytime serials. Two is the high-frequency end of the AM broadcast band. And three, is the radar defense networks of the United States and the Soviet Union. These are the only signs of life on Earth detectable over large distances. This is our image to the cosmos. <laughs> if we can reach the moon, we can certainly devise uh, an engine which will not pollute the air. That was my greatest contribution to Portland State, the day I sold my car and gave up my parking slot. Portland is one of the largest cities in the country that does not have as yet a major university. It is for this reason, among others, that the city and the college have worked very closely together in promoting a federal urban renewal area, which in combination with a South Auditorium renewal uh, area will produce a major transformation, an exciting new part of a whole city uh, right close to its downtown core. This is obviously in our great mutual interest. You know, poor people don't really give a damn how dirty the water or the air is, is when they don't know when the next meal comes from. I need your help over the period of the next two months. I hope that you'll work in this campaign and make an effort in this campaign. I think it's a question of the direction the state's going to go in, what the direction the United States is going to take, and what we're going to be like in the 1970s, what our relationship is going to be to other nations in the globe. I don't say that the problems will disappear, but I say that we can do much, much better than we've done in the past, and I want your help to change the course of action of the United States. And I'm very, thank you very much. Of course, I needn't tell you uh, the dependency of the president uh, upon the politically upon the oil uh, industry. Even what they disclosed in 1968 uh, will show the extent of his campaign contributions from the oil industry. And when I get to writing that chapter on political financing, I'll be writing about the number one cause of corruption in American politics. If there's any one thing that can be said about the American Negro, he's in your image. And if he gets violent, it's because he learned violence from you. And he boycotts because you taught him how to boycott. And should he begin to hate, and he is, he'll hate because God knows he's had one of the master teachers. Next week, Arlo Guthrie is going to come and say, I would intend to come to Chicago, but I didn't come because I knew I was going to be beat up by the Chicago police. I'm being very liberal tonight. I'm not using the word, that other word about, you know, pigs. Uh, but I would never, I don't like to call police pigs because I like pigs. <laughs> if to look for a cure against cancer is no infringement of academic freedom, then to stand against death, as we're doing here, is surely no infringement of academic freedom either. And just remember, when you go into the, uh, when you're deciding who you're going to vote for and who you're going to support, that it was uh, Kennedy who got you out of class. <laughs>